Hello, I'm Alex Yanikouris. I'm the coordinator of the Glycomic Research Group, and I'm working in Lexington, Kentucky, in the uh, headquarters of Alltech in the main research facility. My main focus and my main interest are in analytical chemistry and how to use the different tools related to analytical chemistry to solve the major problems that we have in feed and food industry. Based on the increased amount of recent work focusing on strategies to provide mycotoxin control at different levels of the food and feed chains, it's quite important to realize that mycotoxin represent an unavoidable risk. What is needed are analytical tools that can work as a selective surveillance radar and determine the need for the material that is at risk to be removed. Determining mycotoxin presence is the first step to create adequate protective methods, and this requires the improvement of sampling methods and mycotoxin measuring. Because of the detrimental effects produced by mycotoxins in food and feed grains, the level of some mycotoxins have been strictly regulated in food and feed samples, ranging from micrograms per kilograms to milligrams per kilograms for the majority of them. The main challenge in developing analytical procedures is the diversity of mycotoxin molecules. We know at the moment 500 different currently identified mycotoxins, with each one exhibiting different toxicity and economic impacts. In addition, mycotoxin contamination depends on environmental conditions that favor the growth of mold and trigger mycotoxin synthesis. For these reasons, suitable techniques need to be implemented to allow the mycotoxin determination from multiple matrices, which can in turn also impact toxin extraction and may result in masked mycotoxins. This high chemical diversity is one of the major problems with mycotoxins. The fungal metabolites that can result in a multitude of chemical structure and that can be expected from a sample extract, thus rendering their search very difficult and prone to major errors. The first food and feed evaluation tool will be the observation of signs of mold contamination, either visually or via a mold count analysis. However, these evaluations poorly correlate to mycotoxin presence, leaving us generally with mycotoxin analysis as a tool for IO throughput screening based on mold identification. Still, the complexity of this approach presents a challenge due to the variation of the pattern of mycotoxin synthesis in the environment. There are also more complex techniques that can be used to indirectly recognize toxinogenic versus atoxygenic strains of fungi by detecting volatile metabolites, for example. This is generally done through gas chromatography combined with mass spectrometry. The correct evaluation of mycotoxin levels is strictly linked to the right selection of representative samples, which can only be accomplished by collecting more and larger sample size. It has been estimated that the correct sample size could be as much as 10 kilograms, according to the feed matrix, and 50 to 100 samples needs to be collected and subsequently homogenized into subsamples. The sample size should be homogeneous between samples, with only variation of no more than 5%. No matter what, a portion of the good lots will be eventually rejected by the sampling plants, and conversely, a portion of bad lots will be accepted by the sampling plant. The magnitude of these risks are directly related to the magnitude of the variability that is associated with the mycotoxin test procedure. This approach is even more complicated because of the differences in regulation among trading countries. The errors associated with sampling can be as high as 80%. Only 10% of errors can be made on the subsampling, and less than 10% of the errors are coming from the analysis process.